Well, welcome to everyone. Uh, we're going to jump right in, and uh, I'm going to turn off my camera so that we don't get any kind of interference with the PowerPoint. As Nicole said, uh, we'll stop for some questions when we get through the first five tips, and then we'll take questions again at the end. So feel free to uh, type those in. So our title today is the top 10 tips for excelling on the AP statistics exam. Uh, both Josh and I have been uh, heavily involved in the grading of the exam for quite a few years now. And re most recently, uh, we've been leading individual questions on the exam uh, as they've been scored. So I'm going to start off with uh, number 10. One of the most important things that you have to realize in statistics is that you're speaking a very special language. Uh, so my first tip is for the students, you got to talk the talk on this exam. And by that I mean you have to use the language of statistics very carefully, very precisely. The AP exam readers are required in most of the rubrics to deduct credit for any misuse of a term. So if you're using any of the terms that are defined in your textbook, or on the AP statistics syllabus, you need to use them correctly. Here are a few examples. Uh, a number of students tend to throw around words like confounding or, or biased or skewed uh, in more everyday language, but they don't mean them in their technical statistical sense. Uh, when the reader sees those words, they're trained to read them exactly as, uh, as they're written. So another couple of examples uh, have to do with distinguishing uh, blocking and experiments from stratified sampling. I know we've both seen those terms uh, used interchangeably when they shouldn't be. And being very careful with uh, use of the word normal. A normal distribution is a very special bell-shaped curve uh, that has some nice properties. But uh, in many cases, uh, the problem really just requires students to think about whether the distribution they're talking about is approximately normal. So it's important. Um, to get across the ideas that you want to share as a student in your own words, uh, more so than uh, the, you, get it. you got a call. You were you were just there. You weren't listening. Okay. We have a couple people that. not muted there, Nicole. Fine, I would like some too. Uh, the other thing that you have, besides the language, is um, your use of notation. So when you are uh, using symbols. You have to use those correctly, too. Uh, a couple of common examples. When students are talking about means, sometimes they unfortunately use the notation like P or P hat, which really means uh, they're talking about a proportion. Or another common example is uh, using mu instead of X bar or vice versa. So it's really important to be confident about the symbols that you're using. Uh, the formula sheet provides correct uh, symbols for the mean and for the proportion, uh, but sometimes it's easier just to write M-E-A-N when you want to clarify that you mean mean. So our advice in summarizing, you got to talk the talk. Uh, first of all, make sure you're comfortable with the vocabulary and with the notation, then you don't have to worry about these things. You can use them uh, like a really well-trained statistician. And the other is uh, to only use terms and symbols you know. It's better to explain in your own words than to use a term or a, or a symbol incorrectly. So that's tip number 10. You've got to talk the talk. Josh, over to you. Well, I think we've got one more on the advice. Is that? Apparently, we have one more on the advice. Oh. <laughs> uh, so uh, when you're showing work, we recommend that you start with the numbers substituted into the formulas. We don't recommend showing the symbolic formula with things like p hat and x bar and mu sub p hat, uh, because it's way too easy to make a, a notation mistake. And if you see above, a notation mistake means that the reader often has to deduct credit for that. 